Thank you so much for coming here. I really appreciate it, given that, that we have so much choice today here at the ITB Berlin Convention. We have four stages, 17 tracks, and I mean, there's also some people to meet. And then we have this whole challenge with the German uh, infrastructure, which I'm very frustrated about, because the world comes us visiting here in Germany. We try to do our best to do good business, and then this is sabotage, in my opinion. But let's keep that aside. I just wanted to share, and it's like, a, you know, that you know how I feel about it. So I appreciate you being here, and um, you won't you won't regret it because the next session will give you a lot of learnings. Um, we have Skyscanner. Skyscanner is a partner of the e-travel track. They're sponsoring this session. And we have their head of destination partnerships, Emea, coming. And she will share everything they can share based on their data. And as you know, they have loads of data. So I look forward to a lot of learnings. And I welcome on stage Zeynep Mutlubigali from Skyscanner. Thank you so much for being here. And the stage is yours. Thank you. Thanks so much, Leah. Thanks, everyone. Um, it's great to be here, and uh, thank you for coming to, to our speech today on the last day of the show. I'm glad everyone was able to make it, as Leah was saying, with the travel um, um, disruptions that was happening this morning. So um, I'm super excited today to talk to you about um, our Horizons reports uh, that we launched. But before that, let me just give you a quick introduction to who I am. Uh, so I'm Zeynep Mutabigala from uh, Skyscanner. I head up our destination marketing team uh, for the EMEA region. Uh, we work with tourism boards globally all around the world to create beautiful campaigns to um, um, launch campaigns on our uh, platform on Skyscanner in order to make sure that we're increasing tourism numbers in the destinations that we work with. Um, so we worked uh, predominantly with the DMO, uh, DMOs all around the world. And um, I'm very happy to um, sort of talk about the Horizons report, which looks into all of the dis different destinations um, in e each of the regions and talk a little bit about trending destinations, booking windows, and other um, really important points that you'll see uh, just later on. So. To start off with, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Skyscanner and who we are, uh, just for those who may not know us yet. And then I'm going to go swiftly on to the 2024 Traveler um, into the Horizons report, uh, looking at uh, global traveler behaviors, um, and then the planning and um, destination trends that we have um, as well. So who are we? Uh, we're Skyscanner. Uh, we're a world-leading travel marketplace. Uh, we have three uh, different verticals, flights, hotels, and car hire. Uh, we have more than 1,200 partners um, on our website, and we have more than 110 um, million global monthly um, unique visitors that are coming onto our website to be inspired to find their next destination and uh, to find their flights, hotels, and car hire with ease and confidence. We're live in um, 33 languages and um, in 52 managed markets. And we have, as I said, 1,200 partners that make up the airlines, um, our online travel agency partners, hotel partners, and our car hire partners um, as well. Now, coming on to a very interesting point about our audience that we have on Skyscanner. So here, what we see is that 51% of the 110 million unique monthly visitors that we have on our site haven't actually decided where they want to go yet. Now, this is super interesting because we think that users are coming, really knowing exactly where they want to fly, but actually our data tells otherwise. They're coming to us to be inspired, to understand where they actually would like to go next, which is where we come in as well in terms of inspiring content, inspiring images for the destinations that we work with um, as well. So they have no fixed destination or dates in mind, and we help them find their next trip of a lifetime. We have 18 billion unique routes supported. So with all the different algorithms and combinations that we have um, on our website, uh, through all of the API connections uh, that we have with our partners, we're able to combine all of this and really put everything towards our travelers to find their next trip uh, with ease and confidence. Now, going on to the Horizons report. Um, now, this is super exciting for us because we did a survey of 18,000 travelers, asking them a set of questions to understand what is happening in 2024, what are the trending destinations, um, what are the sort of new things that are coming up for us um, in the next year um, as well. So with this report, we're going to look at a couple of things. Uh, first, we're going to go through the booking windows, then the trending destinations, and lastly, look at a little bit about trip length um, in terms of how long our users are wanting to go to the destinations that they're picking. So starting off uh, with our EMEA travelers here. So our EMEA travelers are wanting to plan ahead. 
So we have a comparison uh, between 2023 and 2024 um, on the slide, looking at how many days ahead are, are our users searching for travel when they're searching for the flights um, to their destinations. And what we can see here is that they are planning ahead. So after COVID, we're actually seeing a normalization in EMEA um, in, in totality. So there is an increase in terms of the 90 days plus that we are seeing. And this is really good news for all of us as well, because that means that uh, within the normalization, the destinations can actually look ahead to see how many um, travelers are going to be coming in terms of inbound and plan ahead in terms of what kind of events or things to do that they can actually put into place um, as well. In terms of our American travelers, they're more sort of open to spontaneity. So what does that mean? They're actually booking trips a little bit less in advance. Um, they're looking at you know, where they want to go next, and they're making a little bit more sort of quick decisions um, around this as well. And they're more open to sort of new destinations, making sure that they're doing sort of in-depth research uh, within this spontaneous era uh, that they have there. So with this, we're also actually seeing a 3% sort of increase in the 90 days plus as well there. They're also trying to um, plan ahead a little bit, but more so the spontaneity um, seems to be uh, the trend for our American travelers. Now, moving on to our APAC travelers, um, they're planning both long and uh, short-term uh, travels ahead. And the reason for that is the opening of APAC later on than the other um, sort of markets and regions that we're seeing. So normalization is happening a little bit later um, in our APAC markets. Um, with 18% of our travelers uh, booking their trip uh, less than one week before their departure, which is less than 3% uh, uh, last year. So again, uh, we're very much looking at our APAC travelers uh, with um, a lot of focus, really understanding, okay, what is happening uh, in that region? How can we help our travelers plan ahead more? How can we help them uh, find that confidence back in travel um, as well? In terms of uh, looking at uh, when our travelers are looking to actually go and what, are, what is happening in terms of the number of searches, um, so in, inside EMEA region, we're seeing that over 50% of our searches are for Europe within EMEA. So they're looking at um, short haul sort of trips uh, that are coming up, which is a 4% uh, increase uh, versus the 2020 uh, three levels. And again, uh, to do with you know, our partnerships with EMR is this is a really, really important factor because we're trying to sort of shift our traveler mindset from, let's say, short haul to long haul or long haul to short haul. And this is the kind of data that we would be looking at um, in order to do so as well. And then when we look at our America's travelers, 70% um, of them, 70% um, of the searches are for Europe. Um, and South America and North Asia, uh, which are uh, becoming more and more popular uh, by 3% and 2% respectively increasing uh, year on year uh, versus 2023. 39% um, of our American tra travelers are planning to travel across the Atlantic um, as well. So again, looking at this long haul versus short haul, uh, we're seeing that there is a mix um, inside our American travelers and the, the profile that they have in terms of our audience uh, here. And in terms of uh, our APAC travelers, um, European sh searches shift interregional for APAC. Again, going back to that uh, normalization, we're actually seeing that in APAC, we're seeing um, searches that are more interregion um, here. Uh, the share of Europe has decreased about 10% uh, versus 2023. And our APAC travelers are exploring uh, North Asia and Southeast Asia instead. So again, there are things that we can do here uh, to expand the reach and expand the sort of search parameters uh, for our APAC travelers to bring that confidence uh, to them too. Um, and yeah, North Asia and Southeast Asia have increased 4% uh, and 1% respectively versus 2023 numbers uh, that we have. Now we're going to look a little bit more into um, trending destinations. So what's happening to EMEA in terms of year-on-year -year growth in absolute numbers. So we're looking at the percentage of year-on-year -year growth uh, for our EMEA travelers in terms of the destinations that they would like to visit. So long haul and beach and city um, are the trending destinations for our EMEA travelers. And what we can see here um, is that we've got a huge year-on-year -year increases in some of the uh, destinations that we have up on, uh, on the screen. Uh, Victoria, for example, has seen a huge surge 
uh, in the searches um, along with Panama City uh, with average trip lengths of around uh, two weeks. So it's really important to look at this not just on ter in terms of the year-on-year -year search volume increases, but also in terms of the trip length that we're seeing in terms of the differences that we have uh, pre-COVID um, and now as well. However, when we look at searches in totality in terms of an absolute number um, of volume of searches that are happening, uh, for our European uh, travelers, the European summer sun still is the most popular um, amongst all of the searches that we have. So we've got places like Palma, Ibiza, multiple places in, uh, in Greece as well that we're seeing that are coming up in terms of total number uh, of searches uh, that are you know, huge in comparison to other destinations. And they make up over half of uh, the top 10 uh, sort of des uh, destinations for our EMEA travelers as well with average trip lengths uh, that are around six to eight days as well. So we're looking at about, about a week of stay uh, with our EMEA travelers here. In terms of our Americas travelers, uh, we're looking again into more of the intra-regional destinations um, amongst the trending destinations that we see for them. So again, we're going back to the year-on-year -year increase in percentage numbers first. So looking at this um, in terms of um, intra-regional travel, uh, we're seeing that um, American travelers are keen to explore um, other regions as well as inter-region. So places like Tokyo, Madrid, and Tunis um, are trending. Uh, with average trip lengths quite similar to uh, the last slide, about seven to sort of eight days uh, that we're seeing for our America's travelers here. When we look at this from a lens of absolute volume of searches that are happening um, for our America's travelers, they're continuing to search for inspiration outside of the long haul city. Um, so in terms of the search everywhere that we have at the top here, uh, this is our search everywhere function that is on Skyscanner, which is um, used for inspiration um, in terms of wanting to find the next destination via Skyscanner by typing in search everywhere uh, to the um, search platform here. And again, we can see that for our American travelers, they are wanting to be inspired. So they're asking the platform, where should I go next? What are the prices all around the world? Tell me about this first, and then I will make my decision as to where I want to go. Um, in terms of looking at the destinations themselves, we've got places like um, Rome, Madrid, Paris, Athens, uh, which are among the popular destinations uh, with an average trip length of around 12 to 15 days. So they're staying for long when they're actually doing that long haul trip as well. So there's a lot of things that can be upsold to them uh, if we think about it that way um, in terms of making sure that they're traveling within the region um, as well when they've made that long haul trip. Now we're looking at our APAC travelers. Um, moving on to them, we're looking at the fact that they are also looking at the inter-regional destinations that are trending. So going back to this year-on-year -year increase um, in terms of search volume, uh, we're seeing that majority of the trending destinations are within the APAC region. But outside of the region, uh, we also have Jeddah, Dubrovnik, and Victoria, uh, which are also trending here. But moving on to the um, absolute volume of searches that we're seeing for our APAC travelers, Europe and US city destinations uh, maintain a popularity here. So we can see that search everywhere has come uh, in the second place here. We've got places like London, uh, Zurich, and Tokyo as well for our APAC travelers. Um, and it's really, really important that we are inspiring our APAC travelers to travel long haul as well. So very happy to see that um, search everywhere and also the long haul travels like the London, Zurich, and Tokyo, um, and Athens have come into uh, the top sort of five uh, that we have in terms of trending uh, searches on Skyscanner. Now we're gonna move into the traveler behavior trends. So we're gonna look at a couple of things here. Uh, we're gonna start with the planning trends first, uh, look at travel propensity and travel spend. Then uh, talk a little bit about the inspiration sources for our travelers and the digital tools that they're using. And then we also have a bit more on the destination trends in terms of the vibes and the trip types that we've come up with uh, for our Horizons report uh, this year as well and the favorites in destination activities. Uh, what are the things that our, our travelers are looking to do when they have traveled uh, to your destination? So good news first. I think we all need some good news today. Travel is a top priority for 2024. Um, so we have asked our 18,000 uh, travelers in our survey. Uh, we've collected more than 295 different data points. And this is really important that 81% of our travelers globally are planning to vacation more 
or the same in 2024 versus 2023. So even against the backdrop of higher flight prices that we're seeing, and I know that we've all been talking about the economy, but regardless, our travelers have told us that travel is still a top priority for them because it is to do with that experience that they want to live um, as well. And then our 76% of our travelers globally uh, plan to spend more or the same in travel uh, in 2024 versus 2023. Going back to in-destination in events, in-destination upsells, this is super important here as well. We know that our travelers are actually wanting to spend money and more money on these experiences and once-in-a-lifetime experiences that they have um, here as well. So again, from a planning perspective for, for the destinations that we work with, um, we want to make sure that we're telling our travelers what other things, what add-ons can they do whilst they're traveling. Now, in terms of uh, looking at the factors um, of travel, airfares are still the biggest cost factor uh, that we see amongst our travelers. So they have told us that 30% of them um, have said flight cost mostly de determines the choice um, of the destinations that they pick uh, for their next uh, trip. And this is where Skyscanner comes into play. Uh, we have uh, features like Search Everywhere. We all also have features like Cheapest Month, where our, our um, travelers can come in and start finding when is the best time to go to a certain destination and find it within their budget as well. So we're trying to be helpful to our travelers to actually explore the world um, as well. 21% have said uh, that um, they indicated that the hotel's cost um, is a top factor for them as well. So after flights, it then becomes you know, accommodation. And then lastly, 7% said the tourist attractions as well. So the museum tickets, uh, the event tickets that they want to buy, they're also checking out you know, how much it's going to cost um, for the overall trip. Is it going to be uh, within their budget? And are they going to be able to do everything that they, they, they were inspired to do so um, in there? In terms of what are they willing to spend more money on? So we talked about the fact that uh, travelers will be spending more or the same in 2024. So what is this going to be? 36% um, um, of them have said that insurance um, is their top um, ancillary uh, choice that they would pick. So looking at ancillaries overall, first we've got insurance at 36, seat selection at 36% as well. And then lastly, uh, they would be willing to up upgrade to business or first class as well at 20% uh, to make their experience a little bit better whilst they're traveling too. So these are, again, important factors to consider um, when we're looking at long haul versus short haul, uh, looking at sort of insurance products and seat selection. And ciliaries are also very important in terms of budgeting around the whole experience. Moving on to um, the small screen. Um, I can see a couple of phones up taking photos. It's super, super important that we're live on small screen as well. And um, nearly half of our travelers have told us at 48% that they had done a destination search on a small screen. Um, and a flight comparison at 47% on their mobile device. So it's super important for us to make sure that our app and our mobile web experience is top notch um, so that we can serve our travelers in the, in the best way possible. Um, not only for inspiration, but also for the booking experience because 40% of our travelers have indicated that they had booked travel options um, on their mobile as well. Um, so it's really important that on the go, our users are able to find what they need, but also complete that transaction with our 1,200 partners uh, that we have globally. In terms of where is our travelers looking for inspiration, uh, we've asked them about this, and YouTube has come as a top source of travel inspiration uh, for our travelers, with 40% have said that that is the main source of um, inspiration uh, that they get, um, with 35% saying that uh, word of mouth is super important for them, so hearing experiences, real experiences from their family members or their friends um, is important for their um, choice of next destination. 33% then said that Instagram is really, really important. And I think, um, you know, looking at the different features of each of the different social media platforms that we have is super important that um, our destination partners are live and have an omni-channel sort of strategy across all of it um, so that they can retarget and bring the user's attention to their destination um, so that our travelers can pick them as their next choice uh, for their next trip. Now, continuing on with um, sort of mobile devices, but also with innovation here, 
22% of our travelers um, have said that they've used an AI chat chatbot uh, to plan and research travel. So um, in, the, in the earlier um, sort of talks uh, today, AI also had come up um, as a topic here. And uh, we're very happy to be a part of this journey uh, to see what we can do next, um, to be in this game as well, to help our travelers. And um, I'm very happy to also talk about the fact that we have our AI chatbot that is in beta mode right now uh, that you can use. Um, so with this beta mode, we are collecting a lot of data, getting a lot of feedback from our travelers, understanding if this is helpful, what else do they need. And we're learning as we iterate and, and go. Um, we're live in six countries right now with this beta. It's, it's live in English language only. Uh, it's live in Australia, India, Singapore, UK, US, and uh, Canada, um, if you'd like to try it um, as well. So what can you do with this AI chatbot? You can ask questions like the cheap uh, European city breaks, uh, can you find me a short flight for next weekend, or what are the foodie city breaks that I can take uh, for my next uh, sort of trip? And the AI chatbot will start sort of giving um, inspiration and suggestions uh, for our travelers with a seamless experience then to search for flights and book the flights uh, that they have found um, as well. Now, um, looking at, again, the factors of picking a destination, um, we talked a little bit about uh, flight costs, we talked a little bit about where they want to spend money, but actually, what is the essence, real essence, of how they choose a destination? So, our travelers have told us largely at 60% that weather is the top factor when they choose a destination. We saw with our EMEA travelers that European sun is, for example, really, really important, and again, that ties very well into the research pieces that we've done here. With 56%, um, sorry, 58% saying that food um, is super important, and this comes on to the vibes and the characters that I'll talk about just um, after this. Uh, food being really important as an experience for our travelers when they go to that destination. Followed by culture, um, attractions, and vibe. So you might be wondering, what is this last fifth one, vibe? What does that mean? And vibe for us within the survey uh, means the overall atmosphere, overall feeling that a person gets, a traveler gets when they go to that destination or when they wish to go to that destination. And 41% have said, we want that vibe, we want that feeling. Um, so what are the trending vibes? What is the feeling? What are we looking at here? So we've come up with seven um, sort of audience segments and buckets um, to identify what are those vibes for our travelers. So the first one, gig tripping. Um, what does this mean? So gig tripping, I'm sure you know about Taylor Swift's you know, concerts all around the world. It is to do with that. So our travelers wanting to see experiences, concerts um, all around the world and you know, following their favorite star, uh, making sure that they're booking the flights and the hotels to be able to um, have that experience there. Number two, we have the main character, Energy. Uh, so as an example here, um, Emily in Paris on Netflix, uh, we have seen a surge in, uh, in the number of searches that are happening to Paris after that was launched. So again, main character energy is to do with you know, users um, watching different uh, shows on Netflix or films and wanting to go there afterwards. Number three is budget bougie foodies. Um, so food being a very top factor um, in destination choice, uh, wanting to have a really, really good food experience, gastronomy experience, but within a budget. So again, helping our travelers to find that uh, with our campaigns. Number four is destination sleep. So catching up on sleep, uh, making sure that they are you know, resting. Uh, so this could be uh, holidays that are more long haul, let's say, uh, wanting to sort of get away from the hustle and bustle of their daily lives. And then number five is around analog adventurers. So going back again, leaving the phone behind, um, having an analog camera with you rather than your, your, your iPhone, um, and making sure, again, you're, you're taking um, a trip of a lifetime. That's going to be a little bit of a different experience there. Number six on celebration vacationers. So it could be to do with a birthday, to do with an anniversary, making sure that you have a different experience to celebrate your loved ones um, within a destination and within a travel that you picked for that year. And lastly, uh, lux for less uh, seekers. So how can we find the luxury that we want, but within the budget and for less um, as well? So again, coming to Skyscanner, finding the best prices, finding the best options is a part of that. So going back to food, I'm talking about food a lot today, and it's about lunchtime, so I think that's about right. So 46% um, of travelers globally said that sampling local food um, is one of their top in-destination activity 
uh, they would that they would love to do. And that's part of the culture, right? So food is part of uh, destination cultures. So it's really important for our travelers uh, to, to have this in mind. And again, uh, travelers are forced for good. So again, trying new things, being open-minded. 46% are saying that food is the one that they want to, uh, they want to do. 42% then said that travelers globally are preferring to sightsee uh, whilst they're in their destination. And 40% have said that uh, they prefer spending time on the beach. Uh, again, you know, the sun seekers that we've seen uh, before from the EMEA region uh, there. So I think that's a whistle stop tour on the trending vibes uh, and the trending destinations that we just went through here. But I just want to close off with a couple of, uh, couple of words here. So, Number one, um, we saw through our survey, and we see day in, day out again, through the engagement of our travelers on our Skyscanner platform, coming, searching, engaging with different flight options, different hotel options and car hire options, engaging with all of our social media sort of posts um, and our videos as well, that travel remains a top priority for 2024. Uh, they want to be inspired, they want to get out there, they want to see new pla places. So even against this backdrop of higher prices, I think we are very confident that we are um, helping our travelers to find their next destination with ease and confidence. Um, in terms of the confidence, we saw this in the booking uh, trends earlier. So how far ahead are our travelers booking uh, their destinations? So in terms of EMEA and Americas, uh, we have seen that normalization come into place uh, already. For APAC, that's coming a bit later, but we're already seeing that comeback as well again. And it's, it's our job to build that confidence uh, with the travelers as well so that they can get out and uh, start exploring new places. And number three, travelers are looking for inspiration online. We talked about YouTube, we talked about Instagram. I think it's really important for all of the destinations to be out there constantly talking to travelers that are looking for next destinations. There are many different ways that uh, destinations can do this as well through uh, really, really um, focused retargeting programs that we have in place where we can help um, as Skyscanner. And number four, lastly, travelers are aligning their destination choice with their personal identity. We talked about seven different vibes just earlier. So unknowingly, sometimes they're actually picking a place based on one of the vibes uh, there. So they could be actually accelerating something or they could be seeing a, 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 a superstar that they wanted to see for years. And that actually falls into some of those buckets here. And again, retargeting users with those kinds of vibes is super important. Because as Skyscanner, one of the most important things that uh, we say here is that we are traveler first. So we want to make sure that when travelers are, are on our platform, they're seeing things that actually help them. We don't want to bombard them with you know, information all the time. We want to put the right message in front of them at the right time and also in the right place, whether it's on mobile web, app, or on uh, desktop um, as well. And that is me, so um, please do check out our Skyscanner Insights. Here is the QR code for the Horizons report. So I'll take a couple of seconds for everyone to be able to uh, get the QR code here. Um, going back to what we are doing, so if you want to get in touch um, about any of the um, slides that I've just went through, um, I've got my email address over here. I'll also be hanging around after this talk as well. Uh, so please do grab me. We can have a chat about it as well. But um, it's very important uh, for us as Skyscanner to be, to be here today uh, to talk to you all. Um, we are here to serve our travelers, our partners, um, and we want to make sure that all of the destinations that we work with, all of the ones that we have seen at ITB over the last couple of days, um, are also knowing what we have on offer uh, that is to do with exactly the data that we gathered through our Horizons report and the data that we gather uh, day in, day out as well. So thanks for having me today, and I um, hope you have a rest, um, great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zeynep Mutlubigali from Skyscanner, and thank you to Skyscanner being a partner of the e-travel track and sponsoring the session. I think it was really interesting 30 seconds, um, in minutes, of course, minutes. Oh my God, it's the last day of ITB. Um, well, I thank you again. I'm not